Hello everyone, welcome back to our show. This time marks our first talk show of the day which we're going to discuss about waste management and given the fact that waste itself contributes a lot to uh, impact of our health and also the environment if they're not properly managed. Now harmful waste can cause long-term health problems and also must be appropriately and carefully disposed. That's right Caroline and in doing so the action can start with communities in sorting their household waste. And of course Karina we've been talking Talking about waste management a lot. Yes, now we have to see the action, and of course, uh, you know, doing the doing the talk, doing the walk. You mean <laughs> now the importance of waste management? We're going to have a chat with Del Terras, senior project leader Winnie uh, Winnie Arindrani, who is here joining us live in the studio. She's all the way from Bali. So we're without further ado, Winnie. Thank you so much for being here with us. Good morning. Thank you. Good thank morning. You for joining us. Looking good and sharp. We're going to talk about <laughs> waste management. Of course, we know that Indonesia is the fourth most populous country. In in the world with that said we know there's a lot of people contributing in our waste mm -hmm. so can you please share with us the latest update on our waste management right here in our nation so well uh indonesia uh, when it comes to waste generation right uh we actually produce or generate anywhere between 60 to 70 million tons of waste okay. per year and it keeps on increasing mm -hmm. the average rate of increase is nine percent mm -hmm. every year but despite of that, most of the households or population population do not have proper access right. to formal waste collection mm -hmm. and waste management system. Okay. And they also mostly do not practice uh, what we call source separation at home. Yeah, right? I see. And uh, I think to add to that, right, the landfills right now in Indonesia are all almost at overcapacity yes. mm -hmm. and also mostly not properly managed right. and this is very harmful for the environment. Why? Because it will produce leachate, it will contaminate ground yep. water as well as uh, producing green gas uh, emissions. emissions. Yeah. Right. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are based in um, Argentina? Brazil and Indonesia? Correct, yes. And so, with the two countries being in South America, why Indonesia? Very interesting, uh, interesting uh, question. Yeah. So, essentially, uh, Delterra uh, tried to focus on tackling waste management issues in the Global South because okay. we see that that is actually part of the hemisphere that needs it the right. most. Yes. And why Indonesia? Because Indonesia, unfortunately, is the second biggest polluter of plastic yeah. in the world after China. Right. So I think yep. it only makes sense yes. for us to also, uh, you know, hold our ground here. Not that we're proud of that status. No, by yes, the way. but uh, we we're proud that change. there is something, right. um, a management to yes. help reduce yes. that, right? And it turns out when you were saying all these three countries, it seems there were the developing countries, yeah. right? Um, where do you think now that becomes the obstacle of changing the mindset mm -hmm. of the community? Because yes, like Delterra, you uh, have a great program, but how can you change the people's mindset yep. or their uh, you know, customs to what, what they're usually done and now you're trying to change it to something that's better? Has it been a challenge for you? It actually one of the most challenging <laughs> yeah. parts of, of doing this right. program, right? Yes, changing people's mindset mm -hmm. towards waste and also uh, changing their behavior yeah. is very, very difficult. Because before, when it will be like, when you when you have something that's, you know, a garbage, mm -hmm. you put it in a trash can. Trash I mean, that was the first thing. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's still very hard for people, if you see on the roads, if you see on our ocean, there's yeah. still some litter, right? And I right? still see people, you know, driving past, oh, I don't have a trash can in my car, I'm just like, gonna open yeah. my window and right. throw it out there. Right. Yeah. And then now to think that they need to, you know, kind of separate it between right. the wet and then, you know, the dry one or yeah. the plastic one or the paper one. I know, how do you change that? them. You are right, right? Like now people's mindset is still sort of like, you know, when it comes to trash or garbage, it's out of sight, out of mind. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. We yeah. don't that's, really that's think right. about... That's the way to put it, yeah. Exactly. We don't really think about what would happen to mm -hmm. those waste mm -hmm. after we throw them. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? And it is challenging, but behavior change is possible. Uh, through several yeah. things, right? The first one, obviously, role modeling. It yeah. all starts at home. If you want to teach your yes. kids to separate their waste, okay. then you as a parent, right. you yeah. better actually like do that, right? Instead yes. of just telling yeah. them to do right. so. And then second, uh, you know, like households or individuals need to be facilitated in order to do so. Right. 
uh, I think most of people think that like when you have to sort your waste, you actually put it into one bin and then after that you need to sort it. Right. No, it's not yeah. the case. You actually have to have like several bins at home right. and then you already wire your mind, you know, yes. like, okay, if it is organics or food waste, then I, I right. will put in the certain uh -huh. containers, etc. So right. it's easier for you to do that. Right. And lastly, for people to actually do that change, they need to see that change are happening and yeah. it's happening across yep. the chain. You don't want to separate your waste. Mm -hmm. If let's say you see your waste collector, mm. mix the waste all over again. That's so like, true. why I did I the hard that? work and then it's, it's just like, like why? Why? Exactly. <laughs> I did all yeah. that. Yeah. Now, just so, yeah. touching base on that, you specifically right now um, focus on the province of Bali. Now, the reason behind that, is it because uh, one would argue that it's more progressive there with the, you know, there's a lot of different yeah. cultures mixing in Bali, sort right. of people just more somewhat educated. So I guess it's a it's an easier jump start to sort of implement that mindset there. Or is there another reason behind it? Well, the reason behind it is uh, obviously, you know, it's all, all eyes are on Bali, yes. Yes. right? Yes. It's the center of tourism yeah. for our mm -hmm. country. And then second is the unique culture yeah. in Bali. I think they're very close-knit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is um, easier for us to essentially go to the communities because right. they have all of these villages yeah. and banjars. Uh, and we can actually pick the role model in mm. each of the communities yes. because, again, role modeling works yeah. really well in this case. Yeah. Mm. So in Bali, you're doing your flagship program. It's called Rethinking mm -hmm. Recycling. Correct. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. So in Rethinking Recycling, we essentially work together with communities, yeah. either villages or cities. But in Bali's case, we actually work with villages and head of the villages yeah. there. What we do are several things, right? The first one, uh, Delterra, actually give trainings door to door to households oh, okay. oh, wow. to essentially emphasize, right? And educate uh, the importance yes. of source separating your waste, yeah. what will be the effect of the, uh, the environment mm -hmm. if you don't do it, mm -hmm. etc. So we do education on source separation. Right. And then secondly, we work with, um, well, Right now, we're actually working with six villages in Denpasar Regency, wow, okay. right? And we are going to expand uh, our uh, program, Rethinking Recycling Program in Badung Regency, mm -hmm. working with over 60 villages. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just with the head of the villages and communities uh, we're working with, but we also teach our friends uh, at the TPS 3Rs, or mm -hmm. Tempat Pembuangan Sampah, Regis yes. Reuse Recycles, yeah. right? And train them on uh, on doing a sustainable waste management system. Yeah. And what does that mean, right? So we educate them and train them on how to do waste sorting. And then second, once the waste is sorted, we actually teach them on how to process each of the categories of waste right. into productive use, right? For wow. example, organics, we can actually turn it into compost yeah. and plastics, we can uh, find an off taker for them uh, to further process, yeah. uh, hence, uh, essentially supporting the circular yeah. economy. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do and yep. we are obviously not doing this alone. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working together with the Regency government as well to roll out this program. Right. So to ensure that all of the policies that they are enacting, you know, all of the other programs mm -hmm. that are related in waste management yes. are actually aligned with Rethinking right. Recycling Program so we can actually actually see the change end to end from households right. until, you know, like the end of the chain, Changing which is right. uh, landfill. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, you know, I mean, just sort of um, zooming back out, taking a step back, we, I mean, you started this in, in Bali, obviously, with mm -hmm. the goal to implement and execute this change throughout Indonesia, mm -hmm. right? But I think um, sometimes when we think of, of Indonesia, we think both, like you said, all eyes on Bali, and of course, the second capital city of Jakarta. Would you say the same implementation can be used here in the capital city where I guess people's mindsets and their way of thinking are a little different than, you know, the, the more laid-back, tight-knit community of Bali? No, that's a really good question. I think overall, right, what the elements that need to be in place, such as source separation, you know, like the TPS3Rs that are functioning, landfill that is properly managed, yeah. etc., need to be in place. I, I think that's the template that will work you know, in right. any part of the world, but in terms of the approach, yes. in doing those, then you absolutely needs to yeah. customize it depending on right. 
Oh, you know, yes, like the, the yeah. demography, the culture, yeah. etc. Yeah. Then absolutely need to be tweaked yeah, because tweaked a little bit exactly to like, exactly to the yeah because right. urban communities they probably uh, will uphold uh, you know like sense of like practicality when yes. they do yeah. things you know on daily basis. Right. But I think that's something that probably needs that's to true. be emphasized when uh, emphasized when we actually go to a bigger, more urban cities. Right. So is there any cities, especially in coming uh, this year, I mean, it's still a new year, 2023, any other provinces or big cities that you guys are trying to venture, especially for this program? So in Indonesia, for the next three years, we are actually uh, focusing on Badung Regency only because okay. Okay. Badung wanted, is quite big, by the way. It is yeah, there's big, a lot exactly. of people there. Six hundred thousand population. Yes. Wow. Right. We're talking right. about sixty villages yeah. and also yes. other uh, right. districts or kecamatan, right? And we want to do it properly and want to do it end to end, right. mm -hmm. working alongside with the Regency mm -hmm. government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also want, uh, you know, like Deltera uh, objective. Deltera's objective is essentially to uh, make. Badung Regency as a role model. So then in the next five years, we can also uh, do this in the whole southern Bali, which yeah. is, you know, part of the touristy place of yes. Bali, yeah. home of 2.5. <laughs> when you were saying Badung, I'm like, uh-oh. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, in the next five years, we want to focus on southern Bali. Mm. With, uh, it's a home of, uh, it's a home of two and, two and a half million population. Yeah. And right. with the hope after that, in the next eight to ten years, we can scale venture, our yeah. program and venture to other parts of Indonesia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think yeah, it definitely starts. Um, you, I feel like you need to make sure you do a good job there yeah. to be good enough of an example for sort of other other cities and other provinces to then follow. Yeah. Absolutely. So, do you also work with local organizations in regards to this? Uh, like a flagship program itself? Yes, we do. And we have to, mm -hmm. right? Like it's yeah. a very yeah. complex and systemic issue that yes. we need to play with key players, Yes. right? Essentially work with key players mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Bali. So first of all, we work with government, mm -hmm. the yes, relevant course. national yeah. ministries yes. right. and also regency governments mm -hmm. for them to enforce the relevant yeah. and uh, you know yeah. policies right yeah. for right. us to be able to enforce this program on the ground mm -hmm. and second we also work with other non-profit organizations okay. who also do you know other kind of interventions mm -hmm. to ensure that we can learn from each other and yeah. also do not duplicate the efforts as well yes. Yes. right and lastly we also work with companies mm -hmm. and foundations and other for-profit uh, organizations to essentially, you know, like uh, do any kind of partnership, including funding or program as well. Right. You know, I'm very just very interested, Karina, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, my follow-up no, question is just because it seems that there are many of these great programs, especially Del Terra's, with this, uh, we think it, recycling, rethinking, or rethinking, recycling. Rethinking, recycling. Rethinking, yeah. recycling. Thank you for correcting me. Um, how was the response? Because you go, you one of your. Um, one of your pursuit is you go door to door. Mm -hmm. I wonder how was the response to the people itself, especially from the community, yeah. especially if they don't understand or this is something that is new for them. How would they respond to this? Because this is a behavior they need to be, you know, kind of adapt. Yep. Was it very easy for them to understand? They were, were they reluctant to do it? Because, oh, now I need to buy three other bins now in the house where we usually I just buy one trash can. <laughs> How was it in the, in the field itself? Great question. Uh, Delta has learned a lot for the past three years <laughs> yeah. on how to actually change yeah. people's behavior. Uh, and uh, in Bali, as I mentioned before, like the communities are very close-knit and yes. also have a very uh, strong role modeling culture. Mm -hmm. So I think when we already uh, change the mind of, let's say, head of the villages or any uh, kind of uh, village figure mm -hmm. and work together with them, right, to change everyone's mind and do yeah. some of level of mass communication yeah. before we actually do education door to door. Right. It will then like make right. the Huge change yeah. uh, easier. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think so that's go the, to the key. head first. It's <laughs> always been like that. <laughs> if we're going to war, it's always the whole, it's always the head first. Exactly. Yeah, top down and then bottom up. That's yeah. right. That Both ways. Mm -hmm. I think you know now. Um, hearing you share about this, uh, Winnie, I think back in the day, I wish they actually taught this in school yeah. to an extent, you know what I of course. mean? Um, and I think educating kids, and like you said, it all comes from home, but I think it's also important to teach them young on um, how to differentiate, how yes. to 
really for your your trash because it's yeah. not something you actually think about. Yeah, it's know? not a second nature yet. No, yes. no, mm -hmm. it's not, and I think mm -hmm. it should be because right. that's how you make the change. Right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, at the end, we need before our, we summon up our our talk show. What would be the end goal, the end game, if you want to say, yes. for Delta, especially in this program? Yes. Uh, in 2025, we have a very ambitious. Uh, goal uh, to impact 10 million people in the world, right? right. In the three countries that we are in right now. Yes. And uh, I think we are well underway. Uh, we are on track yes. in mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia, as I yeah. mentioned before. Our mission is to go to southern Bali, and it's the home of two and a half million people, right? Uh, While well, in Brazil, we're just starting right now, and yeah. you know, like the traction is good. Uh, and in Argentina, we're actually now scaling in. 10 cities and if things wow. go well, fingers crossed, uh, we're actually going to cover 20% of the population of Argentina. Wow. And okay. Argentina's got a huge population. Yes. That's, yes. that's really big. And also for us too, I mean, if we yes. can change and adapt to be better, we can make a difference and a good impact also to our planet. Yes, Again, yeah. Winnie, thank you very much for thank coming here so to much. our studio to elaborate your program of rethinking recycling. Um, what can we contribute? Starting from home, guys. That's what we can do, right? Uh, recycle, reuse, and also just be uh, smart in how you handle your waste management. Thank you very much once again, Winnie. Thank Hopefully we're going to see here. you again right very here in the studio hopefully. for our latest update. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to take another quick break right now. When we return, we'll have more updates from around the world from our earlier segments. So stay tuned right here on the C Morning Show only on C Today.